So I'm pretty sure you've seen a speaker once before in your lifetime. So whether that being a tweeter or a mid-range or a coax speaker or maybe even a subwoofer. What all of these speakers do have in common is their basic structure. So you got some kind of a magnetic arrangement. Inside of that there is a coil and if you apply a voltage to that coil it's going to create a magnetic field and that is ultimately um, moving that membrane that is pushing air molecules basically to your ear and that's what you hear as sound. These will come in some kind of an enclosure in all ranges, flavors and varieties. So, but what if I told you that there's another option you probably never heard of, sounds spectacular and is dirt cheap. So today we're going to have a look at these drivers which are basically pretty much the same layout as the conventional speakers but do lack of a membrane. And that's where the sound absorbing material comes into play. So stick with me, today we're going to build a plate resonator. So as a housing or let's say frame, we're going to use this thing I found on the German equivalent of Craigslist. And we're going to get rid of that, of that here and make it a nice frame uh, for the speaker itself. Next up we're going to work with this material. This happens to be a 10 centimeters uh, like rock wool insulation type of thing. And we're going to cut that into the same measurements as the frames. And then you're going to see me wrap it in some old like cloth linen uh, just to prevent getting these tiny things everywhere. So in the meantime I did uh, design and 3D print these small little hanger like things um, and in theory we can later level the panels itself and have a way to securely mount them. Let me get these installed. This is a Dayton Audio blah blah blah. You can find that in this description, I guess. So we're going to place it on the back side of the panel. And what you have to do is, it doesn't matter what the measurements actually are, you want to place the driver, um, divide that length by 5 and put that at the 2 mark from in this direction. And also uh, you do the same with the me measurement on this side. So you want to place it to the two-fifths, three-fifths rule. And if you want to know why that is, there is an excellent video by Tech Ingredients. You should definitely check that out to go. He, I mean, he goes in all the details. So I will link that also. <laughs> So 
So I set it up in the lab on a small stereo amplifier, gave it a few tunes and it's already really promising. That was really quick, it took about 1 hour 15, including printing the parts to assemble one of these. So I'm gonna do the second and we'll meet again. In terms of cost, these drivers will, this is the bigger version of the Dayton audio speakers. Uh, this can handle up to 40 watts, the ones I'm using handle 20. I think these will set you back around 30 euros and the smaller one for go, going for something like 15. That sound deadening material, I wrote that down, that is uh, the Symphonia by OWA. Um, this material is also pretty cheap, but we had to um, buy that in large quantities. Um, so maybe if you try to find just the single board that will be like 20 euros a square meter, um, we bought um, way big, bigger quantity and then uh, it gets pretty cheap. The rock wool is just your standard stuff. Um, and doesn't it isn't really mandatory for the project I guess uh, the panel speaker itself work without the absorption from behind but since I do have that much of an open space and I have to <laughs> I can't show you all of that since I have so much open space in here um, I have to be really careful with the um, reflection of the back wall etc. And yeah for the housing itself you may do whatever you want. As I said I got these from Craigslist. These are like crates for wine I guess. Uh, they cost a few bucks only. So also I did some quick frequency response analysis. Um, as you can see this graph isn't looking too bad. We do have some hustle in the kick range area we have to uh, get rid of. The whole middle part is somewhat linear, but we do have to work in that range from 10 to 20 kilohertz. But as you can see, the frequency re response in the, in the bottom part isn't all that great. You can improve this by enlarging the panels a bit, but that will only work to a certain degree. So what we're going to end up doing in the next part is to build a really unique subwoofer to the system. So. Thank you all for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Maybe I gave you some inspiration for one of your hobby projects. And yeah, subscribe if you haven't. And we'll meet back in a few days with a, another video on this topic.